Hey guys, Tanner here. So this news is a little bit old, but I'm going to do a video on it anyway. Mainly because I still want to get my thoughts out there and to show my excitement for the upcoming Lego Ninjago movie, again due out this September. So as I'm sure you all know, for this movie we are getting a full-on collectible minifigure series. We've been getting these collectible minifigure series for a number of years now, I'm not exactly sure how many, and I have no idea uh, the amount of series that we've actually had so far. I do however know that we have gotten minifigure series for the last two Lego movies, those of course being, you know, the first Lego movie and the Lego Batman movie, so it would only make sense that the Lego Ninjago movie get a series as well. And thankfully that's what we're getting. So again, this is a little bit old, but we actually got pictures of all of them. The entire Ninjago movie minifigure set contains 20 of these little guys, and I think they're all pretty cool. So in celebration of this and the upcoming Ninjago movie, I figured I would go through each one of these minifigures and rank them in terms of my least anticipated to the most anticipated. Basically, which ones I'm excited to get the most, and which ones I could do without. So yeah, without further ado, let's get right into the list. So starting off the list at number 20 is in fact minifigure number 20, the Shark Army Octopus. This is another one of Garmadon's little minions, I guess he runs like a shark uh, army or something like that. And this guy looks alright, he comes with a stud shooter, he comes with a fish, I really enjoy that octopus headgear that he has on. It looks like we'll get a few other studs for the stud shooter, you know, as refills. And overall, he looks just alright. I'm not really jumping out of my seat, you know, to grab this guy or anything. He just looks cool, and I guess I wouldn't mind getting him. I mean, if we're down here at number 20, and I'm already saying I wouldn't mind getting a figure, you can tell that this series is probably pretty good. So that's pretty much all I have to say about the Shark Army Octopus. There's really not much to him. So let's move on to number 19. Number 19 is minifigure number 10, the Gong and Guitar Rocker. So this guy looks alright, he's got the electric guitar and he has that face, which <laughs> the face looks kind of funny. Um, overall this guy looks pretty generic, I'm not a really big fan of this guy because he doesn't really fit in Ninjago. I mean he looks like he would just be a guy straight out of the regular minifigure series. There's nothing really about him that screams Ninjago to me, maybe those symbols on his shirt, but besides that pretty much nothing, he's just your generic guitar guy. Moving right along to number 18 is minifigure number 8, the Shark Army Great White. And this guy is supposed to represent maybe a general or maybe a uh, higher ranking shark warrior in Garmadon's army. And again, like the others, he looks okay, but I'm really excited for this one because of the amount of detail on him. He has toe printing, he's got a whole bunch of leg printing, arm printing, just printing all over the place. And I need to ask what, of course, his weapon is. I think it's a fish with fire shooting out of it. Not quite sure about that, that's kind of strange to me. But he looks okay, this is probably one of the, you know, foot soldiers for Garmadon's army. Coming in at number 17 is minifigure number 17. It's super funny how coincidences work. But yeah, the Shark Army Angler comes in here at number 17, and like the Shark Army uh, Octopus, I think it was, this guy is pretty much a generic foot soldier. He has, of course, that beautiful little head mold there, and like the Great White, I can't help but wonder about his weapon. I really do hope that those fish are not alive. Alright, so I swear I'm not doing this on purpose, but number 16 is minifigure number 16, the GPL Tech. I'm not quite sure what GPL stands for, um, it's probably something pretty obvious and I'm just missing it. But uh, what really caught my eye about this figure is the Batman t-shirt that she has on under her jacket. Which, of course, the uh, Lego movies are all interconnected in their own cinematic universe, a la uh, the MCU. But pretty cool, it's a nice little reference there. Uh, you'll see something like that with another one of these minifigures coming up. I'm not quite sure what's going on with her glasses there or her goggles, they may be those uh, x-ray goggles or like the Lego Batman movie they may just be um, similar to Robin's goggles where they just enhance the eyes and make them a little bit bigger. I don't know, she looks pretty generic, she looks like she may be one of Garmadon's henchmen, but I cannot say for sure. Number 15 on my list is minifigure number 9, Shark Army General 1. And I really like this one, uh, she comes with a little bit of a smoothie there, or like a slushy or something like that. But what really catches my eye is the fact that, you know, she's a Shark Army General, yet she doesn't really have the appearance of a shark. Unlike the other shark warriors, she does not have a helmet or a mask resembling a sea a life animal or anything like that. But she does have the, uh, the capes, the uh, one back cape and the one that goes up by her neck. And they look like fins, so I guess she is part of the army. But she looks kind of happy or kind of worried at the same time. I don't really know what what her deal is here. She looks pretty unique compared to the rest of the army and that's what makes her stand out to me. Alright, Masako, minifigure number 6 comes in here in this spot, and first things first, I thought her name was Coco in the movie. As you can see in her name tag, it does indeed say Coco, so I have no idea what the what the deal is there. That may just be a nickname or something like that, but what immediately uh, caught my eye about this figure is that this is a lot different from the Masako that we all know and love. She obviously is younger, and she appears to be a lot brighter, more happy, and I think I could actually come to like that about her character. I don't know, we'll see how it is in the movie, but I'm keeping my mind open and just waiting to see what actually goes down. But as a minifigure, I think Masako looks fine, and she She's a great addition to this line. 
All right, next up we have the Earth Ninja Cole in a sort of casual attire. As you can see, he looks like a uh, he looks like he's rocking out, and that may or may not have been a pun, though I am not going to elaborate on it. But as you can see, he does have the little boombox there, and his hair is kind of messed up. It's kind of different from what we uh, have seen so far. It's not tied back or anything. It's just down and loose. And I think he's wearing a band shirt or something to that um, to that. Uh, degree, but yeah, he looks pretty angry. I don't know if this will be like the Cole from the TV show Probably not, but again, I'm just keeping uh, my mind open and while the minifigure does look pretty cool and does give us that little casual side to Cole I'm not jumping out of my seat to try to get this guy All right next up we have Garmadon uh, just Garmadon. He looks similar to his jungle attire uh, I'm not quite sure what that's about. It might be different Maybe not but to me it looks more or less the same So if there's really no change, why would I even really be excited to get it? I mean, I'm probably gonna get a set that it comes in anyway unless there is something that I'm missing But uh, I really don't see any difference here. So moving on all right, so like father, like son, Lloyd comes in here next, minifigure number 12, and like Garmadon, he looks no different than the Lloyd that we actually see in the sets. Again, I don't know if I'm missing something here, I don't think I am, but he looks more or less the same. The suit looks no different, he might have a different face, and he does include his hair and a blueprint for the mech dragon. He indeed comes with his sword that we've seen him with throughout the majority of the marketing, and yeah, I don't know, uh, I really like Lloyd as a character, I hope he's good in the movie, but uh, if there's, again, no change here, why would I even need to get it? All right, next up on the list we have Master Wu. Uh, like uh, Garmadon and Lloyd, I really don't see a difference here. I'm pretty sure this guy does have a different face, and of course, I love the accessory. Uh, the cornflakes with, of course, the Master Chicken on the front. Very cool reference there. And uh, Master Wu looks pretty cool, of course, played by Jackie Chan in the movie. I'm really looking forward to seeing how that turns out. But yeah, Master Wu is Master Wu. He's uh, he's just there. He looks pretty cool, but uh, again, I'm not really super hyped up to get another Master Wu figure. But who knows, I really wouldn't mind pulling this guy from my minifigure blind bags. Next up, minifigure number 15 in the set is Kai Kendo or Kendo Kai. I'm going to say Kendo Kai because that's what I've been referring to the Kendo Ninja as. So yeah, Kendo Kai is exactly how it sounds. It's Kai in his regular ninja suit, only instead of a mask and armor, he has the Kendo armor and the Kendo mask. He does, of course, come with two staffs as his weapons, and he has his hair, and I believe that is an exclusive face. Overall, you know, you guys, Kendo Kai is Kendo Kai. He's just Kai with uh, Kendo armor on. He has that hair piece and that really cool face. Um, I really wouldn't mind getting this guy um, if I pulled him, but again, he's not one of my, he's not one of my, uh, you know, favorites or one of my priorities from this line but still I think he looks cool I like the idea of Kai uh, training off and on in his free time as a kendo warrior I think that'll be very cool but that's pretty much all I have to say about kendo Kai so let's move on to the next one so here we have Spinjitsu Training Nia, figure number three from this set, and Spinjitsu Training indeed. It looks like she is in her uh, training attire there. So it looks like uh, Master Wu trains the ninja and then gives them their suits once they have mastered Spinjitsu, which is pretty cool. I can definitely see that happening in the movie. And if you look really closely on Nia's uh, shirt, you can see the Wu Crew logo, which I think is a nice touch. I like how they carried that over from the TV show as something that Master Wu would actually put together. And uh, as for Nia, you know, generic face. Uh, we get her uh, hair in other sets. She does come with two swords in a different color I think I don't really remember seeing that color unless it's gold but to me it looks kind of brown and again the spinjitsu training attire uh, looks amazing all right coming in at number seven is minifigure number 11 this is the end pop girl and what really uh, catches my eye on this one is the color the blue and the pink mesh really well with each other it reminds me of cotton candy and speaking of cotton candy and rainbows and everything like that if you look on her shirt you can see unikitty from the Lego movie which again is a really cool touch I love how they're crossing uh, the brands like that she comes with the teddy bear the teddy bear looks pretty generic but that's not really my focus for this minifigure I just really like the colors she looks happy she looks bright and she looks like she could brighten up any display Alright, coming in at number 6 is Jay Walker. Like many of the other ninja in this set, this represents Jay in his sort of casual attire when he's not fighting crime. And I guess he's uh, taking selfies with a selfie stick? Not really my thing, uh, Jay seems kind of timid uh, from what we've seen in the trailer, but who knows, maybe he's actually, you know, the computer science um, uh, person of the group, maybe he's one of the smart ones. But I really like this figure, and especially that orange scarf. Of course, the face and the hair are pretty cool as well, and I enjoy the print for the cell phone. Of course, you can't really use it in other scenarios besides this one, but still, I think it's a nice touch. So, uh, yeah, Jay Walker comes in at number six. Okay, I don't know why this minifigure exists, but I want it. It is Volcano Garmadon, the first minifigure in this set, and he's called Volcano Garmadon because of the volcanoes on his pajamas, which is really, really cool, especially with Garmadon's, you know, forearms, the pajamas look great. He's holding a bowl and a spoon, so presumably he's eating some, uh, some Dareth Puffs, you know? Gotta get that cross-promotion in there. Otherwise, the helmet and the face look pretty similar to what we've already seen from Garmadon. I just really enjoy the situation because it's really absurd, but at the same time, it's really cute, really funny, and I really want it. This figure is definitely on my wish list for the Ninjago movie, and I assume it's on many others. So with that being said, Volcano Garbanon takes number five. 
minifigure number five from this set takes the number four spot, and this one is actually kind of weird, but I really like it. This one is the sushi. This one is the sushi. This one is the sushi si sushi chef. It's the sushi. It's the sushi. It's the sushi chef. It's the sushi. It's the sushi. It's the sushi chef. It's the fish guy. He's the guy that cuts up fish and serves them to you with a smile on his face. But yeah, this guy is pretty cool. I've mentioned before about a different minifigure that sort of doesn't really fit in, doesn't really belong in Ninjago. But uh, even though this one may seem like that, it's not. You know, with the whole Asian-inspired uh, aesthetic that the Ninjago movie is striving for, I think this figure is more than appropriate. He's really funny, I really like the outfit, I like uh, his accessories, especially the knife, and I really like that headband. Overall, this guy, you know, I'm not even going to try to say his name, but I'm really looking forward to getting him. Even if he is pretty generic, I still think he's really cool. The number three spot on my list goes to minifigure number 19. This minifigure is of course Zane, again in his casual attire. And it looks like in his free time Zane is uh, enjoying smiling about while backpacking or hiking it looks like. I really enjoy his face um, in this, uh, in the entire movie actually, in every single scene we see him and he's always smiling. Presumably, you know, he's pretty happy and I suppose he is indeed a robot. You can see the sort of blue eyes going on there and we've seen in some of the posters he does indeed have glowing eyes. So yeah, I think it's pretty cool. The legs are kind of generic but uh, the sweater is actually where it's at and of course the backpack piece is really awesome as well. But with all that being said, let's move on to number two. Alright, number two is Flashback Garmadon. I would imagine this is Garmadon maybe before he got married, before he had Lloyd, maybe when he was just exploring the world, you know, touring around, trying to be in disguise so nobody would really recognize him as the evil mastermind. But uh, I think that's pretty funny at the same time. As you can see, the tie printing for the shirt starts at the top and of course goes down to the other torso piece, and that's just really creative to me. I enjoy the uh, comb over hairstyle. I think that suits Garmadon really well. Of course, he has the sunglasses on and he's pretty happy. It looks like he's holding a flyer or a brochure, and of course, a camera. This pretty much confirms that he he was touring the world at some point, maybe even with his family. But of course, we'll just have to wait until the movie to find that out for certain. But just talking about the minifigure, I'm really excited for it. I think it looks amazing, I really like the colors, I like the printing, and I enjoy the entire idea of Garmadon trying to go in disguise and just tour the world. And number one on my list is minifigure number four, Lloyd Garmadon. As soon as I saw this minifigure, I knew I had to have it. This just screams high school to me. As you can see, he's pretty calm, he's pretty casual. He has, of course, the bowl of Dareth puffs like his dad. So, you know, like father, like son. I really enjoy that, but what I really enjoy and what really caught my eye when I first saw it is, of course, that hood piece. The hood and the hair are fused into one piece, and that looks really good. It flows well with the torso printing. It's supposed to represent the hood up on a sweater or a hoodie, and I just really like it. I like all the little details built into this thing, especially on the leg printing. You can see this sweater dipping over the belts, just everything in general is just really cool. This is one that I will most certainly be seeking out, not only because Lloyd is one of my favorite characters, but because this minifigure is my favorite from the Lego Ninjago movie series. I mean, what's not to like about it? Whew. So there you have it guys, my rankings of the LEGO Ninjago movie series of collectible minifigures. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up rating and be sure to hit that subscribe button guys, it really means a lot to me. Don't forget to leave a comment stating what your most anticipated minifigure is, or leave a comment stating what your least favorite minifigure is, or just rank them all like I did. Basically just leave a comment about whatever you want. Also guys, don't forget to leave your video suggestions down below as well for a chance to have your idea featured as an actual video sometime later on. And once again, thanks a lot for watching, my name is Tanner Fishies, and with that, I bid you farewell. They've all got their quirks, you know?